Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. When Roborock announced the diet, I was pretty excited to try it out. For those who are not familiar, the Roborock diet is a cordless self-cleaning wet-dry vacuum and mop. What really sets it apart from the competition is its three counter-rotating roller brushes driven by two separate motors. I really think the edge cleaning ability of the diet is a game changer. These types of wet dry mops are becoming more and more popular due to their ease of use and excellent cleaning ability. Not to mention they sort of clean themselves, but more on that later. The diet is available now from Amazon and the link is down below in the description. These types of wet dry mops are perfect for people who have mostly hard floors in their home and want a solution that will both vacuum and mop at the same time. I've already done an unboxing video where I talked about the specs, so I will leave a link to that video up above and in the description below. In everyday cleaning, the Roborock Diad did impress me quite a bit. However, it's not perfect and there are some questionable design choices. Roborock advertises the Dyad with this ability to clean up both wet and dry messes in your home. I put the Roborock Dyad through several synthetic pickup tests. In the first test, I used salad dressing on my tile floor, which the Dyad picked up very quickly without any fuss. It did leave some salad dressing in the grout, which is an issue I will talk about more when I get to the pros and cons of the Dyad. My next test was with a quarter cup of white flour. This type of test puts a good bit of strain on the suction motors. The dyad did not have an issue though, and it did not clog up either. Lastly, I performed a dry pickup test on my wood floors, and the dyad really impressed me here. Even with removing the front cover of the dyad, it sucked up everything and did not sling debris around the house, thanks to the counter-rotating roller brushes, which pull debris inwards towards the suction motor. Maneuvering the dyad around your house is pretty easy thanks to its excellent steering ability, which is by design. The counter-rotating roller brushes help lower rolling resistance, allowing me to easily push and pull the dyad over my floors. Weighing it at around 10 pounds is not too heavy for most people to carry from floor to floor. With the large battery and 35 minutes of runtime, most of you should be able to clean your entire home with one charge. I was able to clean mine and still had 60% battery left over. A built-in digital battery indicator always shows you the percentage of battery left, although it does count down in five point increments. On the handle, you have three different buttons. The first is the power button, the second is the mode button, and the third is the self-cleaning button. Press the power button to begin cleaning. The dyad will start in automatic mode, by pressing the mode button, you can cycle between all three modes, which are wet absorption mode, used to pick up pools of liquid, auto mode, which is automatically detects if more water and suction are needed, and finally max mode, which just dials up the suction and water rate. When you're done cleaning, place the dyad back on the dock for charging and self-cleaning. Press the self-cleaning button, and for the next few minutes, the dyad will go through a self-cleaning process. Basically, it spins the roller brushes in clean water and then sucks that water back up into the dyads on board dirty water tank. While you're cleaning your floors or the dyad itself, it will alert you by voice if you need to refill the clean water or empty the dirty water tanks. I found the voice prompts to be okay and not too annoying, although there is an option to disable them. Filling the clean water tank is done by removing the water tank from the dyad and turning it over. In the first interesting design choice here, Roborock decided to have you fill it from the bottom, which I am not a big fan of. Cleaning out the dirty water tank is fairly straightforward though. Remove the water tank from the dyad and you can easily lift off the lid and pour out the dirty water. Don't forget to wash the filter. I tend to swap out filters each time I dump dirty water since Roborock includes two filters in the box. You will need to do a bit of disassembly every so often to keep your dyad in good running order. Thankfully, this process is well thought out and easy to do. Simply remove the front plastic cover with a click of a red button, then grab the black plastic tab on the side of the main roller brush and pull it away from the dyad. The smaller roller brushes in the rear just twist out and are color coded so you can tell them apart. Note that one will twist out clockwise and the other twist out counterclockwise. You will need to wipe off the bottom of the dyad as dirt, hair, and debris does collect under it. All right, let's talk pros and cons, first starting with the pros. 
The main sailing feature for the Roborock Dyad is with its triple roller brush design with edge cleaning ability. It's important to be able to get to the very edge of your baseboards, and the Roborock does a good job of this. It passed my edge pickup test with flying colors. I found the water control of the Dyad to be excellent. It never left puddles or drips of water on my floor, and my floors dried very evenly. This is perfect for people with delicate hardwood floors who are concerned about too much water being put on their floors. I was impressed by how easy it was to steer the Roborock around furniture and corners. This isn't thanks to its pivoting head design. The self-cleaning function works quite well. While you do need to perform manual cleaning tasks every so often, you will not be left with dirty roller brushes sitting on the dyad after mopping. The dyad has a very strong suction motor, which was easy to see working when putting it through my endurance tests and when cleaning my floors. Okay, now onto the cons, and there are a few, but none that I really considered deal breakers. First, the dyad could not stand up on its own without using this quirky kickstand, which I did not use very much. I often found myself propping the dyad up against furniture and walls, which is just waiting for a disaster to happen. I think this design is likely due to the pivoting head that allows the dyad to turn, but is one of the things I like least about the dyad. I'd like to know what you think in the comments section below. If you have thresholds in your house, the dyad may struggle to cross them. This is due to the almost flat front on the dyad, which as you can see here does not allow it to smoothly cross the thresholds. This is not a huge issue since you can just pick it up, but I wanted to mention it. I found the triple roller brush design was not great for getting down and cleaning it, the grout in my tile floors. It barely wet my grout, and when I did my endurance test, it was not able to pick up and clean the flour or salad dressing from the grout. A single roller brush could more easily drop down into the grout. If you have all tile floors with grout like mine, you may want to look at the Dreamy H11 Max, which does a better job with grout, and I've recently reviewed it on my channel. Because of the design, only the right side of the dyad is low profile. This is likely so that you can clean under your cabinets, but you're not going to be able to easily get the dyad under furniture. The dyad is not considered quiet, which is due to having multiple roller brush motors and a very strong but loud suction motor. In max mode, I measured over 80 decimals of sound. Also, the small wheels under the dyad tend to make a good bit of noise rolling across my floors. Two of the wheels are plastic and not rubber, which I believe is the main problem here. These wheels also feel like a weak point in the design. The following is not really a con, but something to note. I found the edge cleaning worked very well, but when you first power on the dyad, the edge cleaning is not effective at first. You can probably see that here next to the rug, there is a one inch strip that is not wet. This is because the closest water nozzle that wets the edge cleaning rear rollers is about one inch inboard. My solution to this is clean the inside of the room first and then hit the edges. This way the rear roller brushes get wet while you clean and can do a good job scrubbing near the walls. Now let's talk value. Roborock only offers the dyad in one configuration. With a retail price of around $450, it hits the market $50 cheaper than the competition and their flagship models, which are the Tenko One S5 at $499, which only has a single roller brush with one-sided edge clean, and the Dreamy H11 Max, which lacks edge cleaning altogether. I will soon do a direct comparison between the H11 Max and the Dyad, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I really applaud Roborock for creating the innovation that comes from the Dyad. While it does have a few flaws, I can easily recommend this cordless wet dry mop to most everyone. Just like Roborock's line of robot vacuums, the Dyad is top tier with its ability to clean the floors in your home. I can honestly say it will have a place in my home for many years to come, and one I will continue to use even after this review. A link to purchase the Dyad is in the description below. And I appreciate you watching this video, everyone. Take it easy. Bye-bye.